our members and petitioners to speak directly into the microphone. We record the minutes for legal purposes, and this is the only way to pick up audio. I'd like to say good afternoon to our other commissioners, and I don't see, well, we have someone in the audience, and thank you very much for coming out this afternoon. I'd like to welcome you all. The Historic Preservation Commission is a nine-member board appointed by the city council and serves on a voluntary basis without compensation. The purposes of the commission are to promote the educational, cultural, economic, and general welfare of the city through the preservation and protection of buildings, sites, structures, areas, and districts of historic significance and interest through the preservation and enhancement of local historic, architectural, archeological, and aesthetic heritage found in the city. Through the maintenance of the distinctive character of the city's historic districts and through the promotion and enhancement of the city's historic and aesthetic attraction to tourists and visitors. I would like to take this opportunity to invite our fellow commissioners to introduce themselves and tonight, we'll start from my right and the audience left. Dallas Hanbury. Carol King. Kamala Broadnett. James Long. Brian, Brian Mann. Yes, and we also have with us um, this afternoon uh, two members from our uh, staff, which just like to um, ask them to introduce themselves also, and I will start with uh, my right again and audience left. Uh, Christy Anderson. Paula Wade. Thank you very much. To our uh, fellow commissioners, you have a copy of the minutes of our March 9, 2021 meeting. The chair will now entertain a motion for the adoption of those minutes. I move we accept the minutes of the March meeting. Is there a second? Second. Or any unreadiness? All those in favor of adoption, adopting the minutes of the nine, March 9, 2021 minutes, please let it be known by a show of hands. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Looking at our agenda, uh, for this afternoon, I want to start from the very top with our committees, and we want to start with our sign committee, and uh, let's get a report on that from our sign committee. Um, our deadline was March the 1st, and we had five applications that were with the help of the staff, very well done. Um, and so we, you will see enclosed recommendations for uh, five signs. Um, there, you actually have an image there. The historic neighborhoods are well represented. Um, and we looked at, some people wanted uh, a family historic name put on there, others. Um, it was more appropriate just to have the historic district they were located in. Um, and um, I believe the staff probably produced the um, dates of construction for the most part um, to go on the signs as well. So um, that's all I have except to, if anyone else does not, anyone else has another comment about it? Any other comments? Okay. 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 Uh, then I nominate. Do we need to do that? Um, just yeah, you can ask them to approve the the slate. For okay. To, well, right. I nominate that we um, um, approve for um, the new signs, these five properties that you find enclosed in your handout, addresses, names and date of construction on there. Carol, the 3211 Cloverdale Road, mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, is that an addition on the left side? 
that they've integrated into the the main structure of the house? Cloverdale Road. It was a porch at one time that got closed in. Um, I mean, there's a house that is almost the identical um, right. <laughs> floor plan, two or three doors down, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it appears to have Builder been done. House. It was an early porch enclosure and not um, one from recent memory. Right. I mean, they've done a good job of integrating it into the. Like you can tell that they've done a good job of faithfully. Well, you can still see the porch column. Yeah. At the corner. Yeah. So right. it, yeah. it had been an open porch. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. I was okay. Just curious. Good I mean, that's what I thought. But. All right. Any other comments, observations, concerns? Closing comments, Carol. We need a second and a vote. Need a second? second. I'll okay. second that. All right. Any on readiness? Uh, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. It's just that she used the word nominate. You know, we yes, had I, that I rule. noticed that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Should we either have official action either by motion or by right? Yeah, she yeah. she meant to say what you, would be you the move, word? You move. motion. Yeah. A motion. motion, right? Okay. Right. A move. Right. I move. <laughs> yeah. That's, yes, sir. That's it. I'm yeah, I, I knew what I you move meant. we accept. I, I yeah. Right. I, um, I, I move we approve. Right. I move that we approve the five submissions to receive their historic mark. Okay. And I second that. You second that. All right. Any on readiness? All those in favor, let it be known by a show of hands. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Dr. Bailey, yes, before we move on, um, we had discussed once we, when we relaunched this program, making it committee work so that we didn't spend a whole lot of time here hashing through whether or not the house's shutters were historic and to also kind of provide an opportunity to have discussions outside of the public eye in the event that we ended up with a submission that wasn't going to meet the criteria so we could tell them in a nice letter the reasons why they didn't they didn't meet the the criteria right um, that system does not seem to be working um, the packet was sent um, my, my understanding is that, that, you know, I offered to facilitate or set up Zoom meetings, gave a deadline that a report would be due for the, to be put in the agenda, and I got a recommendation from Carol that day, and I got a concurrence from the other two board members, um, so they weren't discussed. So I am proposing, um, you all have a handout for a meeting schedule with the changes that city council made to the city code. We can now meet on a quarterly basis and we're gonna have to reintegrate discussion about signs into a regular meeting. That's my recommendation because I, I'm, we're not getting good submissions from the applicants. I'm preparing, I'm doing the historical research for what is getting done, but the committee's not meeting and I can't, I mean, this, this is y'all's program, so either you want it or you don't. And I don't care either way, other than, you know, if, if I don't need to do the work, that's one less thing I have to do. Comment. So the suggestion is to discuss within the meeting is that like, what like, like we normally would have, although back in the, the olden days, the applicant would show up at the meeting every right. month, and we're trying to right. consolidate how we're ordering and purchasing things, mm -hmm. um, that you, you would get the, applicate, the nomination information in your packet, and you would all discuss mm -hmm. and decide at a meeting, and then we would hand those out at the next meeting. Well, as one of the uh, members who concurred, I maybe I didn't understand the process. I, if they had, you had wanted us to get together, if that was what we were supposed to do, then 
I must take some blame for that because I didn't, I didn't understand that when it was sent to me, I was asked, I thought that if I was going to concur or not concur, and that's what I did. If it was more to the process, then I'm certainly open to doing that. Yeah, if we really, I mean, it, it, went, it went smooth, but that's because Christy did most of the work, too, for us. Yeah. Um, and I don't, didn't see any, the only discussion we had was about the Mildred Street house. Um, and I think that was the way to do it, was to handle it like, with the, to put the two dates on it. But um, maybe when we get a lot more too, hopefully, when we get more than five who are wanting a new historic sign, but um, we can just, be, be, that would be our process next time, for sure. Well, I have to be honest, um, I think the cover memo that went with the packets mm -hmm. mentioned getting together. If mm -hmm. I needed to facilitate a meeting, mm -hmm. set up a Zoom meeting for mm -hmm. y'all to discuss, I would be glad to do that. Right. And I sent an email to follow up asking mm -hmm. if y'all needed help setting up a meeting mm -hmm. or a Zoom meeting to facilitate the discussion, and I got no response. And yeah. That tells me that you don't really care. And maybe you do, but it doesn't look like it. And this is not my program. I mean, this is an HPC program, and I've said before, I am not the HPC. So y'all need to decide what it is you do want to do and what you don't want to do. And I know it's hard with only having six members and I don't know, we, I, we have tried everything under the sun to try to get the three council districts to, I'll, I need to reach out to Marche Johnson now that she's in place, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know what else to do to try to get these vacancies filled. Right. Well, Christian, let, uh, let me say how much we appreciate what you are doing and have done, and I'd like to get some feedback from our other commissioners so we can move forward with velocity. I think that quarterly meetings sets a dangerous precedent, and I know that Birmingham does it, but uh, I mean, I think that's a slippery slope. Are, are you suggesting that we leave it as it is? I mean, I think we should discuss it. Was there a subcommittee chairperson that was named for the each committee who sort of the point person for gathering the group together? I think Christy is is focusing on two points. Yeah. Number one, the lack of response and the frequency of meetings. Yeah, we had two things going on. I mean, if y'all aren't doing anything, we don't need to meet frequently because there's nothing to discuss. Um, you know, if the, this is certainly a, the, these are, this is a set schedule of things that could be discussed at regular intervals. Um, if there are other business, we would certainly meet more frequently. I think this is, the sign thing is one thing, right? And then the meetings is another, but I think one of the central questions about the meeting schedule is how much time are folks uh, willing to commit? Uh, I don't say that in a positive or negative way, it's just how much time are you actually able to commit? And if it's quarterly, it's quarterly, or if not, it's monthly, whatever, you know, is essentially what we're saying here. How much time do we as individuals want to commit? And that's up to y'all. I can't, I can't answer that. Well, let us say this, first of all, when each one of us agreed to serve, the understanding, I believe, is that we would meet um, monthly beginning at 5.30 p.m. So the only thing we have on the table this afternoon is whether we will meet less frequently than once a month. But as I said before, we also want to focus on the non-response that Chris is uh, 
has on the table also. Which I think ties into the larger if issue of how much time do we want to commit. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but the reason I didn't respond, I thought there was, I guess I didn't see it as my particular responsibility to, to set it up, and I guess that's the way the other committee members looked at it either, too. Um, maybe it would be helpful to have someone who is the subcommittee point person to, to sort of tell her what she needs to do or what, that we need her help. That would be helpful to me rather than all three of us thinking the other person is doing it. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, which, which are leaving it up to the, somebody else to do it. I would like to see if we can make it work before changing uh, and take responsibility if it hasn't worked. I wholeheartedly agree because I think a court, I know other cities may do a quarterly setup, but I just, I think that sets a precedent and not a good one. And I think it makes us even less accessible to the public than ever before. I mean, we're talking an hour meeting once a, once a month. I mean, it's, you know. Well, and with the new code, maybe, and hopefully, there will be more action since designation. It'll be a while before yeah. there's more it's action. It's going to take a while because nobody's even got a lot of field work in place. But, um, And I know some months we don't have very much on the agenda, but in meeting monthly, it says to the public, we are here. If you need to come talk to us, we are here. Um, I, I, I'm not, I don't know about the quarterly thing. I don't know. Okay. Um, to ensure that we just don't make this a protracted discussion, can we agree that we will continue to meet on a monthly basis, and if we don't have any business, we just won't meet that particular month? I think that's a, a, a compromise for sure. Yeah. But Yes. I, I'd like to throw out there a thought. You know, there, there are 12 months out of the year. Routinely, we, we do not actually have a meeting in one of those months, isn't it? Our awards program is one month, and it's called a meeting, but we, it's more of an awards program, right? Well, that's going to be up to y'all, and whether or not y'all can put together a committee to do the awards. Because um, we've and, had years uh, where it's been me and one HPC member deciding who it was because the other folks who were supposed to show up didn't. And then, if we were to go to meeting quarterly, perhaps, though it, it may have already been proposed, but perhaps on those off months could be when committees meet. Um, you know, kind of like the way Congress does or something. You know, they have a, a day when they have a, a full meeting of Congress. Other days they have a, uh, committee meetings. And that way you could at least once a month block off time to conduct HPC business. And it might not be the full body, but it could be committees would get together. Uh, just, just random thoughts. Okay, what do you... What are we uh, so thinking? If, if I may, Mr. Long, yes. your comment about um, trying to make it work, so is that a suggestion to retain the, the fall committee review on signs in addition to not, not going to a quarterly schedule, um, but keep the meetings the same, but also make sure, make, kick that process to a committee? Is that what you're saying? You're talking about um, right now. I look at you. Got spring assignments, fall assignments. That's what you're talking about. Right. That that instead of having the discussions in a regular meeting, are you suggesting when you said, "I'd like to see if we can make this work before we make any changes," is part of that saying, "Let's keep on with the sign committees assignments and try it again." Is that? that that's what. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure I understood. Okay, so I've heard that discussion. So uh, let me just be clear. The committees are staying the same, or are we switching out to the fall structure where it's me, Dr. Bailey, and Ms. Well, the, the committee's already been assigned. Right. My proposal was to do away with the committee altogether, 
because it didn't seem to be working and have that discussion well i'll here. volunteer to be the commu the committee lead for the fall group since i'm on it anyway okay and we will meet you know and do what we have to do additional comments we want to make certain everybody is well, I think Mr. Long said it best, continue to meet as is and in months where we don't have business, don't meet. But I think that's a dangerous precedent to move to quarterly meetings. Um, again, I, I go back to the issue of being accessible to the public. And I just don't see that happening when we're on a quarterly schedule. I mean, we're talking an hour, hour and a half a month. I mean, you know, I understand we're all busy, but, you know. Right. In, in, other, in other words, if I could paraphrase what you're saying, we want to... Uh, increase our visibility and our accessibility. Oh, no, we're going to maintain our visibility. Right. Yeah, we want the people to know that we're here. Right. And I, and, 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 and I think Mr. Long's suggestion that if we don't have business, then, you know, okay, that makes sense. But I think we need to make ourselves available to the public. Okay. Commissioner Long. Yes. Response. To what? Response. Oh. What are you saying? The last part, I didn't catch that last Oh, part. I'm, I'm just basically reiterating your proposal of meeting monthly unless we have uh, no business and then not meeting. I think that's a good idea. I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, I mean, I, the quarterly thing, uh, I don't know. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, so can we agree on that procedure? Yeah, you don't need to do anything because you're not changing anything. Right. Not changing so. anything I just want to make certain everybody's on board. Yes. Okay. Do, do we need know. to vote on that or just make no. it into, well, because we're staying as She just says if we oh, don't okay. change it, we don't have to vote. All right. right. But I just want to make certain everybody uh, has the opportunity to yay or nay, whatever it is we're doing. Well, and I think if we could get, if we could fill our spots, that would help a little bit with new energy and new <laughs> right. New and, folks. And, and, and Chris has already said she's done new input. everything yeah. she yeah, well, could well, possibly I mean, you, you do. You all sent a resolution yeah. to city council, and it got read. I mean, Councilor Jinwright presented it to the council. So I, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. Um, it was part of the discussion with the mayor's office when we did the CLG. Um, I said it would make a stronger showing if our vacancies were filled, and I was assured that the mayor was interested in filling vacancies. Chris, do you think it would help if we sent a letter to the mayor? Can we or ask for an <laughs> <No>. audience? <laughs> or ask for an audience with him? Yes. <laughs> or maybe Mr. Jinright. Yes. Do you, do you think that would help? I mean, we, we sent the resolution. To we took to it us. to work session, and I mean, you're... Uh, it's possible that uh, I think if it came up for discussion, maybe they would entertain it at work session where you could actually have a discussion. Um, but I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would uh, serve our purpose at all? We just maybe invite Mr. Jen Wright to come to our meeting. Why don't we go to their well, meeting? Because I think going to the work session That's would, yeah. work would session. be a little bit more. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. But and, we, and really, it's an audience with District 2, 3, and 4. Is what 2, 3, need. and 4. Brantley Lyons, right. Marsha Johnson, which she's new, so she may, right. and, mm -hmm. and um, Audrey Graham are the three vacancies we have. Okay. Okay. Johnson, Graham, and? Lyons. Okay. All right. Two, three, and four. And when are we proposing doing this? No, we're not. We didn't say when. Oh, all right. We're just kicking around <laughs> something to increase our membership. Well, we asked them to do that yes several times right and so this is more like asking them like why well, haven't you done this i think mean, we've officially asked you to do this oh i don't think and that's the way to approach well, an elected no, official no, no, no but i'm saying we, we have asked we have asked so yeah. can we have some you know can we have a little bit of a response here right right you know what else can we do keep asking yeah keep asking because we need three. All right. So do we have a plan on this? I, I mean, I think that's one of the things we sometimes run into as a uh, commission is we kick our things around a long time before we move on it. So, Chris, do you think it would serve any purpose if uh, we attended the work session and 
put this on the agenda for the work session? We would we would need to get it on the agenda. Yes. Um, or are there back channel ways to do this? I mean, I can. In terms of, can we contact these individuals directly? Yeah. You know, maybe maybe a call from the chair would mean more than us sending me sending emails every couple of months or. Well, let's do this. I don't know. Let's do this. I will call those council persons to Middle Potom next week. That sounds like a great plan. I'll call them the middle part of next week. And no, you know no what later I can do? I, I can, so the board, this is one of the, our, the historic boards are two of the few boards that actually have qualification requirements as part of it. Um, so I will, I can either get that to you or I can email them if you let me know when you call and say that they will be sent the, the criteria for membership. Um, but I think it's very important that that the candidates, that the council, the councilmen and the candidates understand that this board is also unique in that the obligation may go beyond the second Tuesday of every month. That, you know, with mm -hmm. doing committee work doing outreach programs, you know, talking to neighborhood groups, whatever, that, that it's not just a, they've got to be willing to spend more than just Tuesday night if necessary. And it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. And um, we, we definitely need that support if you're going to do anything in the community um, beyond handing out signs. Okay. Would it be beneficial if you had several people who were willing to serve that you could provide names to the council people so they don't even have to try and find someone? It might be. I don't have a list right now of people who uh, no one has expressed interest to me in some time. So well, if you have suggestions. Well, I don't have okay. suggestions. I but, you had a list. Yeah. but for example, like, I, you know, I know Audrey Graham from her work in family court and all that, and mm -hmm. she seems to be pretty in touch with that community. I, you know, I think that if Dr. Bailey just made a call to her, I think she would herself be able to provide a, a list of names. I really think that's a great idea for you to call them. Sure. I, I think that adds that personal touch. and. You know, you're good with people, and you know, I think you'll be able to communicate. You know, hey, you know, this is kind of a dire need for us at this point. Where we've been down a number of members for a while now. Okay. But, yeah. All right. Well, I'll it move. also goes back to that CLG, too. I mean, that's way on up. This this is a real large stepping stone to sure. that too that can be filled. Okay. Yeah, because right. if we get the CLG certification, board and commission training will be required. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be extra time at some point too um, of, of training that that you all will need to do in some form. Okay. All right. I'd like to just hear from all of our commissioners now, not just one or two persons. I want to make sure we're bringing everybody to the table with our discussions. Are we good to go? Mm -hmm. Are the uh, current time? preservation training classes? It all it is still going on. It, our last class was we, last we got week. that on our agenda later mm -hmm. for yeah I, no, the point i wanted to make about that is has anyone asked class members what districts they're in and to get any list of people from uh, that oh, group oh right we have we have their names and everything we can probably that's a good idea too there there yeah. and there may be some within the within the group that might be good candidates we can go back and look and the one and or the ones two years ago too I ended up with an ARB member out of the group two years ago. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Architect, Jake Johnson. Oh. Okay. Excellent idea. All right. Anybody else? I want to hear from everybody now. Especially since the qualification for this board is um, a resident of the historic district, which is not for ARB. Not, it's just meaning yeah. that 
you don't necessarily have to have a particular skill you can also just be a resident of the district to be on HPC okay all Dallas right. is like what uh, yeah <laughs> okay all right thank you very much everybody fall 2020 to uh, 2021 I mean, I guess we're just now going to start working considering that the spring committee has wrapped up their work. I'll get with Christy tomorrow. Well, it'll be the next application deadline is, I think, August 1st. So I'll just send you an email tomorrow so I can get my calendar populated. And then once we get the applications in, you said August 1st. I'll That's when I get them in. It takes me because the information submitted is usually pretty skimpy. Um, it takes me a couple weeks to go out and take photographs. So in other words, once you get them and, and compile the data, you'll forward that to me. I'll set a meeting. I, I, I send it to all the committee members. And I'll set a meeting and we'll sit there and discuss it. Okay. And then Dallas, probably the, one of the biggest point of contacts is the historic neighborhood social media that once, you know, that opens up in other words, that's where we get, okay. I think a lot of. I'm going to put, I'm going to email Christy about all that tomorrow. Put that in my phone. Okay. <laughs> all right. Any questions or comments regarding fall 2021? Any of our other commissioners? Comments? All right. Awards. Need a committee. Mm -hmm. Volunteers. Yes, ma'am. Well, okay, we have one volunteer. I thought we already did this one too. I'll be on it. Okay, two volunteers. Can we get one more? Well, one I open. guess I messed up on the last one, so I'll try again. Sir, you, I you, messed you, up on the last one. I'll you try good. again. You, you good. <laughs> okay. You, you good. All right. Uh, so we got three. We have three volunteers. And uh, Paula, you have their names? I do. Good enough. Thank you very and, much. And the committee okay. is reminded that for this, it doesn't just have to be you three. You can pull in folks from the outside who might be interested in looking at these. You, you can build your committee up um, if, if you want to, if you want decide you want some neighborhood representation or whatever okay. um we do have a i do have a list that i compiled for last year <laughs> um and obviously we didn't do a whole lot of things last year um so we do we do have a list that we can target but we'll also put it out there um just generally to the neighborhoods is kind of our may may is historic preservation month so that that would be our may announcement okay Thank you very much. Preservation class recap. Well, I think we had good participation. We had about, um, I'm trying to think, uh, uh, we had, we capped it at 30, but we had, uh, we, we had 30. It, we had, a, we capped it at 25. And um, we had a few little extras. Uh, and then we also um, were approached by the city of Fairhope, the city of Hoover and the city of Aniston. Gadsden and Birmingham. Um, their HPC equivalent zoomed on the lectures. Um, so they attended the four lectures. Um, and um, so that, that was really um, very, I mean, that was pretty cool that they went to, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so um, it, it went really well, and I think we had good attendance for the most part. The whole time <laughs> we did but it's another situation where it was well received by the public and not very well supported by the HPC um, Carol and Dallas came to all of the classes I should not have had to have brought bags and t-shirts to any of you tonight but I did so we did not have full participation I did not put a budget request in for next year to do this I'd suggested before it may need to be an every other year thing anyway but I've also told landmarks that they'd like to take it over. They are welcome to do so. Um, because again, I'm not the HPC. So um, this isn't really up for discussion for next year because we'll, I'll be 
looking at what we need to do for board training with that CLG certification anyway. And there are only so many things I can get done. So, um, but it's, it's been, it's been incredibly well received, and I think the landmarks is going to put them up, the first four classes up on YouTube at some point this summer. Um, but we have questions from people saying, oh, I told my neighbor about it. Are you going to do this next year? And I said, I hope not. <laughs> um, so there, there is interest in, in having this. So. Comments? Observation. Well, I think there's also the options to, um, uh, we have a good core, we have a good core curriculum for the most part, but uh, we can either continue that basic or we can totally change it so that like the people the last two years came would come back. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's kind of, there's a kind of a catch 22 in there, you know, what do we keep doing and then what new do we add mm -hmm. as well. But, um, <clears throat> Uh, because they've all the different factions that we do have are, are very popular mm -hmm. and very well received, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we talked about before is alternating with some sort of thematic class, you know, that maybe you have a six week offering where you look at um, church architecture in downtown Montgomery, historic churches in downtown Montgomery, where you visit a different building each week and talk about the architecture and the history and um, that's just an example but um, where, where you could have a, a more thematic approach to um, of, of what's being offered. Let me just ask um, are we making a list of our repeat attendees so we know who's coming from one year to the next who's uh, repeating we, we only had one. We, we had have? one. Uh, Sandra came to both. Oh, okay, you're Sandra right. Nichol was in the first class, and she came to the, the mm -hmm. second one. Okay. But that, right. that's the only repeat. Okay. Are we doing anything to reach out to people who attended the previous year? Um, they're all usually on the historic neighborhood blast, and these people will be added mm -hmm. as well now. So okay. they'll be receiving um, information about any type of historic preservation activities in, okay. you know, in but, town. You know, so. we, we sent out the curriculum and it hadn't changed significantly from the previous year. So most of those folks wouldn't have really been interested in coming back, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, the, the main difference was that we had that um, tour on Goldweight, which was, um, we got to go into all of the buildings, which was nice. I think everybody enjoyed that, but that was really the only um, a few were the real. Yeah, they really liked they really liked that. We, that you know we could have spent more time on that. But that was a rain thing, but yeah, that was a, a big hit this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments, concerns? All right. Thank you very much. Other business. Any other business? Any announcements? Anybody like to make an announcement? Something coming up? I have a little something. It's nothing very big. So I think you all will remember a few months ago I mentioned that the Montgomery County Archives was uh, the recipient of a federal grant from the National Archives. We've since assembled um, a little exhibit case uh, in the Montgomery County Archives highlighting the project and kind of explaining to people what we're doing and why. So it's in our lobby. You just can come check it out whenever. It's not a, it's not huge, but it's I think pretty well done and pretty interesting. So you should stop by and see it. Thank 101 you. South Lawrence Street. Thank you. Is it in the courthouse lobby or the archives, the archives lobby? Okay. Carol, that's a brilliant question. Yeah. Um, we have a separate entrance to the, the county yeah, archives the at the corner of Washington and Lawrence. So don't go to the main entrance because they'll look at you with a blank stare. Well, you also have to get checked. The southeast corner. Very good. <laughs> okay. Southeast corner. Any other business? The north, the north um, to the southeast. That's right. Yeah. Commissioner Hanbury, uh, don't leave before you and I can talk. There are some records of deceased civil rights attorney yes, Charles yes, Conley that talk. you and I need to talk about. We do. Um, that we're trying to have preserved. We'll uh, talk after the meeting, definitely. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Okay. All right. We have one uh, guest in our audience this afternoon. If you'd like to say a few words, please approach the microphone. You have two guests. Dr. Two Kelly. guests. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please approach the microphone. <laughs> She's like, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> mm -hmm. We can do it alphabetically if you like. <laughs> Just speaking to the microphone so we can pick you up. Yeah. Give us your name. Is it on? I just want to say good evening. Um, I'm down here on Valerie Smedley with Tours of Montgomery. And I have an interest in the preservation of our historical sites here in Montgomery. So I'm interested in knowing what you all are doing. And um, if there's anything that I can do to assist you all on any committees or anything of that nature, feel free to get in touch with me. Thank what you. district do you live in? <laughs> Say what now? Where, where do you live? Because if you're in a historic district, we can. <laughs> uh, my biggest concern is District 3. Yes. My business is in District 3. Yeah, you're on Highland uh, Avenue. He wants you to name your district. So oh. we, we, I, as you heard from our discussion, we are trying to fill vacancies. And when somebody mm -hmm. comes to the commission and says, hey, I'm interested in this, we might want to consider, well, you know. Well, yeah. my business is in District okay. 3, and I'm right at the corner of High and Jackson. Dr. And Bailey, are you, you taking notes? I know how historical oh, yeah. that intersection yeah. is. Yeah. She's right across from yeah. Moore. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. historical right. area. So I'm there all day, every day. So I have a sincere interest in seeing history preserved. She's in, she's in Centennial Hill. I'm, I'm saying you two should talk after the meeting. Yes. <laughs> yes. No question about it. Uh, th thank you. And thank you. And the point is, ma'am, please feel free to come back and uh, let us know how you're doing and what you're doing. Yes, sir. Okay. The other guest? Would you come to the microphone and say that? <laughs> <laughs> Give us your name, ma'am, and just uh, take um, three minutes to say whatever you want to say. Cynthia McAllister. I live in the Capitol Heights um, neighborhood. I just attended the, the leadership preservation class, and I missed reading the whole email that said I didn't have to come tonight. I thought I was supposed to come, oh, so no. that's why I'm here. No, but it. I have enjoyed it. But um, I loved that class. I loved every week that I came. It was just really wonderful to be there. And I learned a lot. And, and um, uh, Christy and Carol did an excellent job pulling that together. And um, I would come back again, probably for the same stuff. But I will come back at the, uh, uh, definitely if the agenda changes some. OK. Thank you so much, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you coming. Appreciate uh, both of you coming. Anything else? Chris, do you have anything? Uh, Paul, do you have anything you want to bring to our attention? Yes, sir. Well, let me again thank Ms. Uh, Paula Wade and Ms. Uh, Christy Anderson for coming out, Mr. Mike Mann for handling our audio, and Dennis, our security person, and to all of our uh, other commissioners. We look forward to seeing you in June. There being no further business, meetings here by adjourned.